Welcome back to the Vanguard Athletics Podcast Network. You have entered the Coach's Corner where we discuss life and coaching and all things Vanguard Athletics related with some of our coaches. Jeff Melton is joined with me today and Jeff, you had an opportunity to sit down and talk with head baseball coach Rob Pegg this week and uh, tell us a little bit about that conversation and uh, the man that is Rob Pegg and uh, the leader of this baseball program. Yeah, so it's really cool. Uh, Rob is a former player here, former assistant coach here. Uh, you know, I, I've known stories. He, he says his first job at Vanguard was he was paid to uh, mop the, the gym floor with a bucket, old school style, back when he was a student <laughs> here. And so just his rise up to now, you know, guiding our baseball team. You know, he's been he's been back here. I think he's entering year eight, if I remember correctly. Yeah. You know, just things like that. So and just the ups and the downs of, you know, Having to recruit, you know, we talked about it, um, which you guys will hear in a second, of just losing 14, 15 guys a year just to graduation is crazy. You know, none of our other programs are dealing with that kind of just roster turnover and, you know, the amount of arms you need to get for pitching, and especially as our conference is going to this four-game schedule. It's just really interesting um, to hear that. And then, you know, just talking about the fall season and kind of how you break it up as a spring sport, it's always interesting. You know, I, I never had to – privilege of playing baseball Mm -hmm. I was a I was a basketball and football guy growing up so that never kind of moved over to the beautiful game of baseball so I you know I personally just don't understand the mindset of you know how to prepare for that so it was really interesting for me alone Mm -hmm. you know just kind of learn of you know how what what you're doing in fall ball and you know in such a individualistic sport masquerading as a team sport like you know baseball is uh just learning that um from him was really uh really enlightening yeah yeah no that's good i think you you hit it right on the head i think a lot of people from the outside in don't understand baseball maybe (laughs) um until you start sitting down and talking with coach beg and even some of the players about the process that they go through to to begin a season and it it really is super intriguing and so i hope you guys are able to to kind of see that in this conversation that jeff is able to to have with head baseball coach rob peg all right, welcome in uh, head baseball coach Rob Pegg, a uh, SEC alum, and uh, you've fulfilled many different positions here at Vanguard University over the years, which we'll get into, but uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is you guys just kind of concluded your fall ball season. Uh, it ended with the annual Blue-Gray series, so kind of just walk us through the fall semester, you know, what as a coach you're hoping to get out of it, how to start building that crum- camaraderie, you know, with your your season kind of being split up like that, you know, with a long Christmas break in between. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The fall is extremely important. Every year you just see the importance of it more and more. And we get our guys going right away. In fact, the first, the first event we had this year was exciting. We had the guys at the harvest crusade um, there at angel stadium and, and many guys hadn't experienced something like that, but that, that started to build the camaraderie. And I think it's unbelievable when you have an event like that on a baseball presence. So it, it, that fits our guys for sure. Then we get after it, you know, the training, the conditioning. You know, the whole goal in the fall is is individual development. As guys can improve individually, we improve. And in that process, they do a lot of competing, competing for jobs, competing for roles. And, you know, they're competing against the guy beside them. But at the same time, they know we're on the same team and that it's going to make us all better in, in the long run. Um so, yeah, they grinded. Blue-gray series was fantastic. Some ups and downs in that. Some unlikely guys had really good series. And, uh, you know, so really good fall. So walk us through um, kind of how you guys break down that blue-gray series. You kind of break up team captains, and it's a little bit like an old-school playground draft, right? Just everybody online. Yeah. and Yeah, it was fun, too. And we had, a you know, one of the new coaches to the staff this year. And, and just talking about the staff, three great guys helping out in the program and, and uh, Trevor Davidson and Bo Coolin and Ryan Hiley, those guys do a fantastic job. And so they add a little bit more flavor to the draft this year. But essentially, we, we try to find a position player and a pitcher and match up two guys as kind of co-captains where the position player would oversee all the, the, you know, the decisions on the field, who's playing where and what the batting order is, and the pitcher can help, help manage the rotation, et cetera. So this year we had Grady Connor and Josh Weeks two four-year guys so Mm -hmm. we opposed them so that was kind of easy to split them apart and then pitching a little more difficult but we decided to go with two guys that had some experience from last year and and look to have good years for us this year as well and Garrett Mulmer and uh, Matt Lester Mm -hmm. everybody else is on the board by position you know there's the official coin toss and (laughs) 
and then they you know go through their selections all the way down uh, and we just we have it we have it managed so that they can't you know one team can't overload with all the stud pitchers and mm-hmm. and that kind of thing to get some sort of balance but it usually works out good yeah. yeah and this year it went full five games right full and, five full uh, five pretty pretty wild series there for you guys so that's exciting so kind of going back to um you know, the fall ball season and how that develops is so when you are uh, setting things up in, you know, the summer and August and looking at how you're going to lay out your, your fall season, you know, what is it you want them to be better at as a team from week one to, you know, the final week of the fall? Is there is there a specific end goal you want to get to or is it just like, hey, every day we get out here and we cross the lines, we want to get better? Yeah, a, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. We, You know, we look at it as it's eight weeks is what we're allowed in the fall to do team stuff. And then there's some individual stuff built around those those windows. But eight weeks is about half what you have in the spring, which is a 16-week season. Mm-hmm. And so the guys get that feel. So we want to see how they how they uh, handle the rhythm and the day-to-day aspect and, and that development. And so you look, you look for that. You look for a lot of the individual gains. You want to see pitchers progress. You want to see hitters in improve some metrics that we look at, uh, you know, team speed, some velocities, exit velocities, all those types of things. And those are sort of some of the measurables that we want to make sure guys are still improving with. And then from a team, you know, you're still forming it. Like I say, you get some new guys in the fall. You want to see how they come into the process. It's it's new for them. How we do things here is probably what was done differently than that their high school or junior college or what mm-hmm. have you. Um, Team wise, you really want to see how they come together as a group because at the end of the day, baseball momentum and and culture and chemistry is huge, and guys that can really pull for one another, um, and and that's a little harder to to manage and train. It's it happens sometimes a little more organically if you have a lot of good guys. If you don't, you know you have to coach into that some. You have to show what guys look like. For example, I think our first fall game. Uh, that we had against uh, junior college, I wasn't pleased. I wasn't I wasn't pleased at all mm-hmm. with how we managed that game, where our focus was, everything like that. And so we addressed it. You know, we addressed this with some some tangible stuff, the guys to work on, and we really saw that improve as the fall went on. So that uh, you know answers a little bit of that for you. Yeah. So as a coach, what's the most challenging part when you have so much roster turnover? I mean, every year you're graduating like 12, 13 guys out of the program, which, you know, all our other sports, maybe the soccer's and basketballs are dealing with five or six Mm -hmm. at a time and just, you know, losing so much senior leadership every year and then having to replace that from your head coaching, you know, skipper chair, you know, how do you manage that and try to, to rebuild that each year? Yeah. That's yeah. I always joke. I would love to manage the Yankees and, and be able to pencil in Derek Cheater, Jorge Posada, and Mariano Rivera just year after year. And yeah. Not have to find a new shortstop or yeah. a new ace and all that kind of stuff. You know, you you try to be out in front of it as much as you can. You look at who your seniors are going to be, what you're going to be needing for the next year, and mm-hmm. so within the recruiting process, you try to address those needs as best possible, knowing that it's not going to look the exact same. Um, and then you try to see, you know, you do your best effort you can. You know, you get you get blessed with some special guys, which we really feel this year. It's, it's exciting. And as we as we form them throughout the fall, we just we have to kind of build our team around the personnel. We have a we have kind of a blueprint of what we would like to see, but at the end of the day, the players that you get may not line up perfectly with that mm-hmm. blueprint. And so what we have to do is is then figure out, and the fall's a big part of that is like. Who are we gonna be as a competitive team? You know, are we gonna do a little bit of this, a little bit of that? You know, that kind of that kind of aspect. Definitely. So we're gonna transition a little bit into your unique Vanguard experience as well as Southern California College. So let's start back when you played here. Um, remind us again. Uh, it was back in the Southern California College days. Yeah. You were here for two years as a catcher, correct? Yeah. And, and and so kind of break down what what was Vanguard or SEC baseball like back when you played first started playing here? Yeah, and I gotta remember for me too. <laughs> this is getting longer. <laughs> I got the late late nineties. Yeah, I you know this was before internet days, electronic age, all that stuff. So when I first came here, I'd actually never been to the school. I'd never heard of the school mm-hmm. before. So I I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was very blessed and fortunate. 
you know, when I came in, it was a brand new head coach, Kevin Casper. It was his first year. He was still figuring some things out as a coach. He got the job midsummer, so he didn't have, uh, you know, he didn't have the full season to recruit, which was probably good for me as well. Part of the, <laughs> part of the reason why I ended up here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, you know, we were kind of just feeling our way. There were some returners that talked about some things, how it was, and then there was a decent amount of new guys. And I'd come in from a junior college, and I recognized the first year that we weren't overly talented. You know, coming from the JUCO, we had we had a lot of guys go to Division One and sign some pro contract and came here. And I thought, well, okay, you know, again, not really knowing what the NAI was about, what this was about, but I knew that we were a team who was going to have to grind. And Coach Casper, he set a great tone, a great foundation in terms of work ethic and and really honoring God and how we did things. And that was that was big. And we, you know, we had a had some marginal success that first year, um, and then built quickly on it. You know, when Casper was able to have a full year, our talent pool increased a lot that second year. My first year was a struggle. Like I think we were, we were eight and like thirty-two or something. It was it was That's rough. That's a long season. <laughs> yeah, it was long, and it wasn't that. You know, the record says one thing: we weren't getting blown out. We were losing a lot of close games. Mm-hmm. We actually had a pretty decent pitching staff. We just couldn't score runs. And then the next year, we had addressed some of those needs, and I think we flipped around, had like a thirty-three win season, mm-hmm. got to the final of the conference tournament, and. It was, that was pretty cool. And then so after that, you graduated. You kind of transferred into a, a coaching role at that point under uh, Coach Casper, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, had an opportunity after my senior year. It was always my goal to play pro baseball. I didn't get drafted, but I, I got an opportunity in the Frontier League, which mm-hmm. is an independent league. Mm-hmm. I went out there. It was a great experience. Played for the Canton Crocodiles, experienced what a kind of a pro mindset, the bus trips, the quick turnarounds, all of that. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to win the championship, so that mm-hmm. was fun. Um, I was graduated, but I knew I was coming back to work on my teacher's credential and had, you know, built a decent relationship with Coach Casper, and, and he allowed me to get into the coaching world. And so I thought, this is perfect. I'm still around the game. I'm here anyways. Mm-hmm. I want to be useful. I want to have fun. And, and that's kind of how the uh, – the coaching journey began. All right. And then how did the uh, working for the admissions department, how did that come into the mix at, at one point? Yeah, that was, that was a, that wasn't immediately because I was, I actually was a substitute teacher and I had an emergency credential the first couple of years. And then again, um, coach Casper, the way they knew the university, they knew there was an opening mm-hmm. and he thought, Hey, this could be a way that he thought I could be a decent representative for the school that way. And then I would be on campus and able to help him a little bit more because mm-hmm. he, his plate was full. He he had he was teaching courses. He was full time baseball. Mm-hmm. He didn't have a lot of help financially, and so I I still have a tremendous amount of respect for for him and everything he had to grind through. It was a little bit different of like a, a college landscape back then. Of yeah. you know. It, what it wasn't fully dedicated to just coaching and recruiting and things like that. Now, like your position is here. So, and then, um, you, you went away, coached, uh, you know, out in Colorado, mm-hmm. you, get, you get the job at Vanguard. Um, what was it, about eight years ago now you came back? Yeah. 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 So kind of from, from the return kind of back to your alma mater, you know, and to know it was something that you really wanted to do and you, you feel a big calling being here. But, you know, over these last years of kind of, you know, walk us through that that time, you know, and we'll build up to, to the high of, you know, getting to the World Series right, in 15 right. and things like yeah. that. Yeah, and the time, you know, I was – it's it's hard to get a to get a head coaching position um, at, any, at any college level. And so I was fortunate with the opportunity in Colorado and really, really learned a ton out there. It was a good conference, um, coached against some really good coaches. And I knew it was an uphill battle just with the resources and things. But that that experience really prepared me for coming back here. Because mm-hmm. I don't think I would have been prepared to be a head coach here just straight out of the roles that I had. Being able to see a little bit different part of the country and, and how things were done um, just, just gave me a lot more knowledge and, and expertise, uh, you know, it's probably the wrong word, but <laughs> growth towards yeah. that anyways. And then, yeah, the opportunity to come back, like this is this is baseball country, and you're in Southern California, Newport Beach. Play all year round. <laughs> sunshine. It's, you can't, it doesn't get any better than this. I tell recruits that all the time. I was like, you might find some places that are equally as nice, but none better. 
and then the wealth of talent that's just in the area. Mm -hmm. And as a as a coach, you're you're a competitor. You want to succeed. You want to make sure you're at a position where you think you can succeed if if thing if things happen correctly for you. And so it was exciting. And I felt um, I was excited about coming back, no doubt. You know, my wife's from California, so it was cool for her. To get she back was also she family. also played here at she, Vanguard. She did played actually for legendary coach coach davis yeah played on a his, hall of famer his first his first ever um team as yeah. the head coach yeah. here so she has great stories about that um so the, yeah a lot of the connections and friends and some alumni and, and to get back here within that i was also very um not, not challenged but i just felt a, a lot of responsibility because I knew a lot of the alum and people before me that have poured into this place. You know, I was very appreciative to, to again, another Hall of Famer, Bob Wilson, for giving me the opportunity mm -hmm. to come back. And and Bob had known me. Actually, he came here. My first year as a player was his first year as a, as a athletic director. And, and finally, I think I think he's told me that Casper was his first hire mm -hmm. when, when he was here. So I felt, yeah, it was really grateful for that opportunity and, and knew and, and believed that, Hey, you know what we can do, we can do some special things here, uh, competitively. And then, you know, just, just the faith aspect, which is a, a huge background of Vanguard mm -hmm. and the tradition that's been, been set in the program. Absolutely. And so one of the, you know, t you touching on that alumni base, one of the biggest things that that alumni base has done is Dean Harvey field, yeah. you yeah. know, name it after Dean, after he passed on and just the legacy that he left and, you know, how our players today get a step on that field yeah. every day. Yeah. And there's just the story of Dean everywhere, you know, his custom jerseys hanging in the clubhouse, things like that. So, you know, you were a part of that, that team of, you know, designing the field, getting the word out, you know. And so between, you know, Jeff Motsky and Donovan and, and Pup Nelson and all those guys yeah. that rallied around it, you know, what what does it say about Vanguard Baseball that, you know, these guys played on the team in – 1985 went to the world series together yeah. you know and in in 2017 they come back around that singular cause yeah no that was tremendously exciting and and honestly i remember you know getting the job and and knowing that there was a tradition here and there were guys that cared about the program and continued to care i didn't know if we'd have, honestly i'd never that was always a dream to mm -hmm. get to that but didn't know if it would happen and so with the guys that you mentioned, as, as well as, you know, Tony Elias Caius and, mm -hmm. and his connection to the program and all those guys rallied, and it was exciting. Because whenever you do that, it's not easy, and there has to be a why behind it. And, again, the, the, the why was Dean. And, mm -hmm. and we challenge our guys now all the time just saying, hey, here's the story of Dean. Here's, how, here's why the field's named after him. Are you going to be a teammate, a guy that 20, 30 years down the road – other or your teammates would name a field or something mm -hmm. after you or you know and so to see that it's rare that's not that stuff doesn't happen everywhere it just doesn't happen because a team's there and and the, the guys will care and so they, they've stayed committed they talk to our guys whenever they're around they come out to the field they'll share a few words of wisdom some funny stories and we remind the guys all the time when we're stepping on a charter bus we got this little locker room it's mm -hmm. like yeah i remember we had a change in the parking lot man mm -hmm. we didn't come in and a place for the bags and we drove minivans to all our games and mm -hmm. some of the guys driving i said you guys you know so we we remind them so hopefully and 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 that's the vision that's the vision for every guy that will be a bought in alumni that they can look back at their experience at vanguard as a, as a lion and a baseball player and say yeah i want to this is a part of me i played here i enjoyed my experience and i want to make sure it's still improving in quality for the next guys that come around yeah, and speaking of that, of you know, obviously the field's going to hurt help with recruiting. Yeah. You know, playing in one of the best conferences in the country is going to help with recruiting. You know, our our conference has, I think they've sent a team to the World Series all but one year in the last like decade or something like that. You know, yeah. we were Vanguard was privileged to go in 2015. Big part of that staff was uh, four guys that got drafted yeah. recently. You know, so we had um, you know three guys go to the Angels and one go to the Braves, and and so. What does it say not only about Vanguard baseball that, you know, they're they're learning about Christ, they're getting a godly education, you know, they're getting their degree, but then they also can fulfill every little boy's dream, yeah. you know, of, of signing a, a contract and playing in the minors, you know, getting that shot to the big leagues and, and all of that. Yeah. No, we've, we've definitely been, been blessed. 
with some guys of talent because, uh, you know, you obviously need that if you're going to succeed at any level. And, yeah, I was super excited when those guys got drafted, uh, excited for that opportunity for them. And then just to see how well they've done mm-hmm. was kind of – uh, just validated the process in the conference and say, look, you know what? This is high-level NAI baseball, but these guys are good. They can play with anybody in the country. You put them up, and we've seen that. You know, Rojas in AAA and Sandoval in AA and those guys, mm-hmm. Isaac up there, Camacho doing well. And mm-hmm. Yeah, those guys compete with everybody. And you see that all across the conference. You know, you guys make it to the big league. So mm-hmm. hey, those young guys out there listening – like, oh, no, I got to go D1, I got to do this. I was like, no, you can get a great education and great location and this level. You can do that. You can get that dream. And I think all together, I don't, I don't have the numbers exactly in front of me, but just over again with the tradition, I believe there's over 50 guys that have played some level of professional baseball. Uh, even just this past year, Ryan Doherty, you know, didn't get an opportunity with affiliated, but he's playing professionally down in Australia. Mm-hmm. Had, a, had a few of those stories. So, yeah, that's extremely proud moments um, with the guys that have been able to go through the program. And, Lord willing, that that, that tradition and, and those opportunities continue. Exactly. It's it's not necessarily where you play. It's just what you do with your at-bats and your, your innings on yeah. the mound. So, as you kind of, you know, you're in this Christmas season, guys are taking a break, they're able to go home, kind of gear up for, for the grind of the season, um, you know, playing over 50 games in less than – about nine weeks there, you know, kind of yeah. packing them in there. What what do you what do you see being the the key strength or two uh, of this team? You know, moving into the, the spring season. You know, I like this group. Um, I think we're one of the most overall, uh, offensively and defensively, most athletic and, and well rounded team that I've had maybe in the eight years here. So um, always had some some really good players, but I think as a whole. We got good team speed. We got some power. Guys can play multiple positions. Mm-hmm. So I think we'll we got some different ways we can score runs and challenge mm-hmm. opponents. It's going to be exciting. Um, on the on the pitching side, again, a lot of different a lot of different arms, a lot of different ways guys can throw and compete and and do that. So I think it will definitely be a team that that competes and causes trouble for opponent opponents for sure. Um, the other thing about this team is I think it's it's as close knit. And that the role guys, which I really believe is the, the key to any team, is that the guys that aren't quite on the front lines, how they handle their role mm-hmm. and how they're buy in day by day and really pull for the guy beside them or in front of them. And I'm really confident in this group that these guys understand that and they're going to be all in. Though everybody wants to be on the front line, they're still going to be all in. And so we've, we've talked about that this year. It's like you can't just hold on to the rope. you got to be pulling the rope, mm-hmm. you know, and – and so we've challenged them with that. We've seen that in the fall. We had our we had our road to Lewiston challenge mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, where again, assistant coaches great job putting that together and push the guys just to kind of see what their heart and commitment and desire and some things are. And it's really good. Mm-hmm. And they're not me- those things are hard to measure. Hard to measure. If if we could, you know, if we, any coach out there can quantify that stuff <laughs> and measure it. He he'll be really wealthy or successful. Um, I think I think that'll be a huge key for us, mm-hmm. especially with uh, you know kind of the attrition that can come in our our season. You yeah. know when when we get to our conference slate of playing four games in thirty six thirty eight hours yeah. in there, you just got to have a lot of different bodies all over the field. You know you know I remember last year we lost a Gold Glove guy and any that Gold Glove guy in the yeah. beginning of the year, and you just have to have somebody step up, and you never know when your time's going to be called. So got to be ready to, to enter the game at any point. So we just thank you for stopping by and visiting yeah. with us. We wish the best to you and your family over the holidays, and we look forward to seeing you guys uh, out on the diamond. Uh, do you remember off the top of your head what the day of the first game is? Well, the first game's January 24th, and then the home opener will be Saturday the 25th. It's coming up here. Is what? that that's against Westcliff, right? Westcliff. Yep. New new program. Perfect. So we we thank you for joining us, and we will uh, see you this spring. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Welcome back here, and thank you so much, Jeff and Rob, for leading us through that conversation. So intriguing, so interesting to hear just the baseball program, where it's come, where it's been, where Coach Peg has been as well. And so thank you guys for joining in and listening into that conversation. As a reminder, please feel free to subscribe, rate us through any place that you will find podcasts. That can be Apple, that can be 
uh, Google Podcasts, that can be Stitcher, that can be YouTube, Facebook. We've got a lot of different places you can look at this. So feel free to check it all out and like us, subscribe, and rate us as well. We just want to wish you guys all a very happy holiday season. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all as you're listening in. And we'll be back for the next year, and that will be on the next Coach's Corner. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.